What's up, everybody? It's been a minute. Uh, Riley and I just closed out uh, 750 days of van life. Uh, quick math will tell you that that's just over two years. So we're entering our third year. And uh, this video, we're just going to reflect back on some of the things we've seen, some of the things we've learned, and uh, just kind of a general overview. So without further ado, let's get into it. When we made the initial decision, or I guess I did, Riley didn't have much say in it, um, had about two weeks to figure out what we were going to do. And uh, my choices were get an apartment that was going to cost me half of my month's wages and I was going to have to lock her away uh, 11 to 12 hours a day. Uh, I was working four tens at the time and being, I just couldn't see locking her away like that. Um, some people understand it, some people won't. You know, people that are dog people will understand. So basically I've just dedicated uh, this portion of my life to making sure that she's uh, taken care of. She'll turn 15 this month. So um, that was one of the major decisions. And then also, uh, secondly, the financial decision. I mean, working four weeks, you know, in a month and then having to spend two of those weeks just to pay rent. I mean, I know a lot of people are doing it. Prices obviously on everything are going up currently um, it's not easy for most people and uh, I decided to take this path basically for those two reasons there were some other underlying factors but those were the two big driving forces again I just couldn't see locking her away like that um, you know it's just a prison sentence for her um, I've had her since she was a puppy and uh, again just wasn't something I was willing to do to her um, it's an immense amount of work to pull up in a super small vehicle with a dog uh, I mean, basically, I live in a dog kennel on the wheels, but uh, that's okay. Again, pe some people will understand it, you know, some people won't. So first off, when we initially got into this, uh, I didn't think it would be this long. Uh, I figured maybe a year, I don't know, maybe six months to a year and a half. Uh, had some plans, tried to find some property uh, that didn't work out. Um, so we've carried on on this path. Um, been a lot of places, seen a lot of beautiful views, uh, met some really rad people. Um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, once you get out there off the beaten path and you meet uh, other nomads, travelers, van lifers, whatever you want to call them, and uh, there's people doing it for different reasons. Uh, some are full time, some are part time, what have you, but a lot of those people are pretty cool. That's been one of the uh, great upsides. Uh, met some lifelong friends out of it. But uh, overall, I mean, it's uh, a lot of work. Uh, the van that we're in is uh, just a van. Um, a lot of vans these days are. Uh, basically an RV skinned this van, not us. Uh, we're in a transit connect with uh, no real amenities. So we have to drive to everything. You know, if you need food, you gotta drive to it. If you need a bathroom, you gotta drive to it. If you need a shower, you gotta drive to it. So those are some of the things uh, that we've learned to adapt and kind of spread out our schedule and do over time. But uh, again, uh, didn't plan on doing it uh, this long when we got into it, but it's the way it goes and uh, we've adapted so besides that, I mean, the best part, obviously, of the van life is getting to travel and see places. Um, again, just like living costs, it's extremely expensive right now. Uh, fuel's gone up. Food's gone up. Um, it was okay prices for about the first six months we were doing it. We started in August of 2021, and then after that, the prices started to go up pretty drastically. And as people know, that continued to rise. So that's a big expense. Um, I unfortunately don't have any income. I'm just living off of money that I have saved in the cashed out retirement. Um, again, there are people that do this full time that do pick up temporary jobs or work online. Uh, I haven't found anything in looking uh, that I'd be able to do online that would make me any money. And then again, it's really hard to work with her because I don't have any uh, amenities. I don't have any AC or anything. So I can't just leave her in the van when it's warm out. Um, or lock her in a van for, you know, a full shift. I mean, she's got to go out and go to the bathroom and be fed. Again, I mean, there might be ways to work around it. I haven't done anything that necessarily works for us. There are people that do it and have found things that work for them. Again, this is all just based on my circumstances or scenario. And again, people are going to agree or disagree with, with it, but uh, everybody's on their own journey, right? So this is our journey and this is what we've uh, learned and how we've adapted and, uh, the way we manage it and take care of it so 
the traveling part is pretty awesome. Uh, I think we've been to 13 states, which isn't a ton in the amount of time, but we've been to all the Western states. I think I've been to three or four states that I'd never been to. Been all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and Texas. Uh, there's a free campground down there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, seen massive amounts of beautiful places. Uh, I get asked what states are my favorite. Um, I really like spending time in Western and Central Montana. If you've been on this channel before, you'll see some videos on that. And then every time I go back to Utah, uh, I'm impressed. Uh, still a lot of that state I haven't seen, but I see a little more every time that I'm there. And then also uh, Arizona. Um, there's some places that I definitely don't like in Arizona, but there are places that I have found in Arizona that I do really enjoy. And uh, it's kind of kind of surprised me. There's some areas there that are more like Colorado. Um, I lived in Colorado uh, several lifetimes ago, and uh, there's some places there that kind of remind me of areas around there. But uh, yeah, the traveling part's cool. Uh, the first year that we left, we spent a ton of, amount, ton of time out on the coast. Uh, we don't do that now just to expect, it's too expensive. There's hardly any free camping out there. And a lot of the campgrounds are really expensive, especially if you're in California. Fuel is really expensive out there, and then the campgrounds are really expensive, so the price adds up pretty quick. So that's another thing that we've done. We've gone away from pay camping for the most part, uh, a lot of boondocking, uh, pavement surfing, um, what have you. Occasionally stay at friends' houses, but uh, most of the time just uh, rolling around. Uh, looking at things and trying to find new spots to uh, stay at and that's a kind of a task all in itself um, it's something you get used to doing the longer you do it um, and you kind of get systems down for it there are apps for finding free camp spots or places to stay and uh, i learn about new ones all the time that's another thing when you meet other nomads and travelers uh, the insight that you can get from those people is uh, almost priceless i've kind of touched on that in other videos but that part's pretty cool um, nomading travel traveler uh, community is uh, pretty open in, in our experience. Uh, like I said, I've met a lot of rad people. Another thing that I've uh, touched on before, um, but the little expenses that uh, add up over time that kind of caught me off guard. Uh, you always have to pay for showers for the most part um, in some form or fashion and then laundry, things like that. Normally, I mean, they still cost money even if you're, you're housed, right? You still got to pay for water and stuff, but they're exponentially more expensive when you're out traveling around. And again, uh, we're just in a regular van. I don't really have any, you know, it's not like an RV where we have a, a shower with us. Um, although my friend Carrie did give me a shower bag and I've used it a couple of times. Um, so we do use that occasionally. But again, just the small expenses when you're moving around all the time. And then uh, we've cranked out a lot of miles in the first couple of years, so a lot of man maintenance. Again, I've touched on that before. Uh, that stuff adds up. And just like everything's gone up in price, you know, tires, brakes, uh, fuel, oil changes, um, all your basic uh, consumable items without any major repairs still uh, gets pretty expensive. So that's something to take into consideration. Uh, if you're thinking about getting into this type of lifestyle, um, it's definitely not cheap. Um, I mean, you can do it on a budget for sure, but it's it's not free um, by any means. And it's not all that cheap when you add up all your monthly expenses, um, even when you're staying for free and eating on a budget and things like that. I mean, if you're still doing laundry and taking showers and those type of things. Um, unfortunately, I had to get into a van payment. The car that I traded in on it was paid off, but... Again, like I said, I only had two weeks to make a decision and uh, kind of jumped before I looked, and that's what we ended up with. And again, we, uh, or I, I didn't think this was necessarily going to go on for quite this long. The other thing uh, I get asked quite a bit is, do I like it? And uh, it's just like anything. Some days are, I like it. Again, when you're out traveling around and seeing beautiful places, it's hard not to enjoy that if you enjoy nature or scenic views on any level and then again like I've mentioned several times before uh, meeting other uh, like-minded people that do this either uh, part-time or full-time is pretty awesome but again uh, overall uh, it's quite a bit of work uh, when I got into it I had some idea what it was going to take but not you know obviously the full idea until you get to, to doing it and you just kind of have to adapt and overcome and find a system and I mean, it's evolves all the time, but uh, I'd say overall, I, I do enjoy it. 
for the most part. Um, I mean, it would be nice to have somewhere to go back to. I met a couple uh, earlier this year just outside of Sedona in Arizona. They were from Canada, and the wife was talking to me the last day before we were leaving, and she was saying she didn't care. You know, she would need a, a tent and tent in the woods or teepee in the woods or something just to always have that place to go back to so not having a permanent location to go back to uh that's ours i mean i've had friends offer uh for us to stay with them and stuff but a place that's ours we don't have that so that's kind of hard at times um you know but there are people that do this uh full time and have done it longer than i am and that's the way they like to live so again it's kind of case to case and uh this is just our experience with the the whole thing um, but overall, I would say that I like it more than I don't like it, but it is quite a bit of work. Um, it almost becomes a job, you know, trying to find places to stay. Like I said, you always have to drive to what you need. Um, you don't get to just walk down the hallway in your house and take a shower or use the bathroom or those type of things. So, um, it just becomes its own tasks. And then that ups a little bit. Also, if you have a pet with you, you know, I got, uh, dog to take care of uh, full time and you know she has needs toenails needs cut she needs food or medication or or what have you so that's another thing uh if you are doing it um pets are a lot of companionship i mean we spend uh almost all our time together and i've probably spent 90 percent of my time maybe 85 and something like that uh you know in isolation without you know, human contact. Most of my human contact is just talking to people in the grocery store. So, um, something to consider also. Anyway, that's just some of my thoughts on it. Uh, again, we're, uh, a couple weeks into our third year and, uh, out here just doing it. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. If there's anybody out here doing it that's done longer than me, leave a comment. If there's anybody that's interested in uh, starting it that has questions, uh, leave a comment below. Um, I try to respond to all the comments on long form videos. Uh, we've been making a lot of shorts uh, lately, just kind of uh, as a side project from something fun to do. Um, but Riley and I would like to thank everybody for coming along this week and checking in with us. Um, till next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.